What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beard's Garage and this is our new favorite mini bike so far. We haven't found the flaw in it yet, um, but this is a Coleman B200 RSV. We did the two inch lift kit on it, rough country, uh, that we're selling on uh, rbgcars.com. So make sure to go check them out if you have this bike and also um, our frame bushings for this to get rid of the rubber. But what we're gonna do today is put some Larry Meat Hoosiers on this hog. These are our favorite son of tires you can get on Amazon. Link down below, of course. These are the 19 by 7 by 8s. I forgot you can get a 20 by 7 by 8. We bought them in the past. I should have bought those that raised it a half inch or so more, but I didn't. So sue me. Take me to court and sue me. Uh, so we're going to tear this bike down today. We're going to take off that, what I'm assuming is a 196cc, and we're going to do a full all out build on that engine using the Coleman engine. So we're going to do a billet rod, flywheel, cam. We'll go over all the parts we're putting in there from EC Carbs uh when we get to that point so in today's video you'll get a full build on the engine you get larry meat hoosiers then the bike put back together we're going to dyno the engine before and after we will have to put it back to stock because we have put an upgraded carb and this sick exhaust on it uh but while we got to take it apart i'm gonna get this exhaust cerakoted as well so we're just gonna tear this thing apart and then we'll get into the performance stuff i'm gonna guess the engine is gonna make six horsepower or less most likely Maybe not. Maybe it'll make more. That other 196 was five and a half. So yeah, I mean, it was brand new. That. It was a brand new, brand spanking new engine. So, so let's get to tearing this thing apart. We're just taking the tires and the engine off, basically. So this is the bushings, the rubber bushing we talked about being a weak point on these bikes. You can see that if you get any kind of horsepower in them, it's going to let the whole engine cradle, all the horsepower is going into this cradle here. Uh, so we sell on rbgcars.com steel slugs to put in here. If you have a lathe, you can probably make them yourself, but for the people that don't, we make them. We get them CNC made local, so they're made in America with American hands. So. The way I've been getting these out is I drill the rubber out with a quarter inch bit until I can get this inner race out. Once this inner race is out, then I can use a hammer and knock the lower one out and then flip it and knock this one the rest of the way out. It's been working pretty good, so we'll see if it works with this, this style. fitments way less on these than the Trailmaster. This just slid out the bottom side. So honestly, we can probably knock these out without having to drill it. Uh, that's nice for removing them, but that's even crappier if you want to keep them. So let me see if this one's gonna come out. I'll try to hit it from the, the back side. Nope, it ain't seeming to, to go. All right, so I was able to go through this hole and knock out the back one. Bam.
win. Perfect. Okay, so we dynoed this hog and it made six horsepower, which is surprising. That means the lowest horsepower engine that we've tested so far is the Jim's Dong engine off the Trailmaster box, but it was the lowest performing engine. And they're both was brand new. Both of these have like, well, probably like an hour on them. So what we're gonna do to make more horsepower out of this engine is uh, we contacted EC Carburetors and we got a PZ22. Now this is a surrounded around a budget build because I wouldn't buy too many specific parts for this engine. You're gonna be way better off with the old saying, there's no replacement for displacement. So the bigger the engine you can start with, the more power you're gonna make in the future. So that's why we say, I mean, from our testing, the Wildcat is the best engine. So I say do these parts and the cam and everything will work in the Wildcat. So that's the best thing about this. You can get your feet wet on this engine and then buy you a Wildcat later or something. So with this budget bill, we're going to be putting a PZ22. We're not going to go crazy on the carburetor because this head's only going to flow so much. We are going to port the head when we got it off. We're going to install some 22 pound valve springs. On this carburetor, we're probably not going to be able to use the curved intake. So we're going to use EC's little straight intake, which I like these quite a bit. Uh, just because the bike, once you curve the intake, it gets into the frame. Uh, to keep it cheap, we're going to go with the Ghostbuster cam that we use in the Road to Horsepower. This is a milder, a good like stage one, stage two cam, uh, and we have it sitting around. And like I said, this will go right into the Wildcat if you was wanting to swap over to a Wildcat later. Uh, of course, we've got the air filter comes with a carb. And for the flywheel, we're going with the cast aluminum because it's only a $40 flywheel. It's very affordable. So uh, we wanted to talk real quick about why we're using the cast flywheel over a billet flywheel. I personally would go with a billet flywheel because in the future, you're gonna be able to get even more RPMs. I wouldn't turn this 9, 10,000 RPMs. I personally don't trust it. It might be rated for it, but I wouldn't trust it. I don't know what it's the exact numbers it's rated for, but like if you're running the Ghost, you need to upgrade to this if you don't wanna spend the money for a billet. The reason this is stronger is because the magnets are held in with pins. You can see, they're not glued on and held on with a Phillips head screw like a stock flywheel. Um, that's the biggest reason a stock flywheel is dangerous. That's the biggest downfall of it. And they're poorly casted. This is a little bit better casted, um, but the biggest thing is the magnet is encased in the flywheel and pinned in, not just glued in. So you'd have to bust the flywheel to sling the magnet on this. Um, so that's the reason we're using this. But if I was spending the money, and gonna take this engine even further, I would jump up to a billet flywheel and not waste the 40 bucks on this. You know, put that 40 bucks towards a billet flywheel. Just wanting to make it clear why we're using certain parts on a budget build. And this keeps everything super cheap. And to get a little bit more timing, we're gonna do a five degree offset timing key. It's gonna give us just a little bit more timing. You can go even more extreme than this. This is just all I have is a five degree uh, timing key. And as I'm saying these, of course, you can see that prices are popping up. Uh, and then we are going with a pinnacle billet rod. It's an 8270 for this engine because this is the clone 196cc clone. So this is just a billet rod. There's no extra link to it or anything like that. Last thing is since we're going to be making more power, we're going to go with the Super 30 series from EC Carbs. Um, they have the cheapest price on these. So make sure to check these out. If you're pushing any kind of RPMs, this can handle it. I don't know if you notice on the dyno, this thing revved out to like it was going past five grand and i could hear the valves rattling pretty hardcore so that's why you do not take the governor off without doing flywheel and valve springs bare minimum make your guesses down below don't watch to the end and make your guesses six horsepower things eight foot pounds of torque uh i'm gonna guess we're gonna be around 11 horsepower when we're done so let's get to it of course, we'll be stripping this engine down to a bare block to do this build. 
This is the same process as any other small block engine build, so it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of ways we could have gained even more power with this build, but again, we was wanting to stick with a budget theme. So that's one thing we never like to see is the plastic cam gear in these engines. But this is um, the worst part about these engines is the plastic cam gear. After a lot of riding, you're gonna eventually wear this and it's gonna be a failure point. Uh, it's fine in a generator or something, but uh, with something you're gonna be pushing RPMs, this is one thing you're definitely gonna wanna get rid of. So, so many people stress out trying to get this little clip out, this little C-clip, and this is pressed in the block, and then that C-clip is what holds this governor gear in there. So, this can be such a pain when it takes seconds to knock the entire pin out and then use like a quarter inch bolt that's one inch long, and it'll thread right into the block. You don't have to tap it or anything. So, I highly recommend doing it that way because it knocks out the entire governor, gets rid of it, no fuss, no muss and make sure to get the washer that rode behind the gear out of the block. With this build, we shouldn't have to do any clearancing, so the insulation should be straightforward and quick. Make sure to clean off all the valve grinding compound off the crankshaft as well as the flywheel before reinstalling the flywheel. When installing the offset timing key, make sure the offset is to the right on the crankshaft. The biggest restriction on these heads are the sharp casted corners. I won't be boring out the ports a lot because of the small valves that the 196 cc's have in them. 
at the end of the day they're only going to flow so much air through them so we don't want to hog out the port too much and have a lazy flowing head take your time and smooth out the transitions and just look at how the head flows air in and out and improve that path you can see this made a huge difference in how this head can flow in and out and that's basically all we're trying to do when porting the head Got the hog all finished and it looks good. Got Cerakote exhaust on it. So everything is fully done on this for this stage. We're not talking about what the next stage is. So shut your pie hole. Um, well, let's get this video done so we can get to that. Yeah, cause it's gonna be sick. So we're pushing 10 horsepower. The torque was 11, I think. 11, we gained three horsepower. Four. Four horsepower. Yeah, we went from six to 10. Mm -hmm and then went from 8 to 11 almost on torque so it feels pretty good i mean does the old suzuki demon over there with the stage 3 wildcat feel like a hoss compared to it absolutely but For sure but uh let's go skindaddle
Did you what? Not expect it, I guess. I'm gonna build a six-inch longer swing arm for it.
So getting off back to back, what do you think? I, it felt they feel completely different. Oh yeah. So this one, I do think a longer swing arm would give it a world of. Work. Yeah, because look at the length on the Trailmaster. You can see how much length it has Stay. compared to that baby boy. But uh, other than the swing arm, handling wise, what do you think? It's pretty good. I uh, slammed on the brakes and spun it around and yeah. accidentally wheeled out of it. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's what? bad. And what it's doing, what we're doing with it next, will be even worse with that. Way worse. More power. Yeah. So, but that one needs the pegs on it, real bad. Those front pegs. Yeah, I don't like those. And uh, not having front brakes. I don't use front brakes much, but I know you do, right? No, I use rear. Okay. Most bike riders use front more than anything. I don't. I like sliding the rear end I and stuff. So. But uh, it feels, I mean, when you get off of that making, what was it making, 14 or 15 horsepower? It's remember, huge difference. You feel the difference for yeah. sure. The belts getting ate up on it and everything. So that's a really good stage two to do to a Coleman if you have one. If you're wanting to keep that engine, that's, I mean, it feels great. You just yeah. need a longer swing arm. Be careful on these things because that mother is torquey now. All right, guys, massive shout out to EC Carbs for sending out the parts to build this Coleman engine. This is as far as I would build the engine without doing something with that swing arm. You can see it's extremely wheelie happy. The bike is so short. Coleman did such a good job on everything on this bike other than that. Uh, how low it was factory was a big downside and how short that swing arm is. I know we could make new tabs and put the swing arm at the back of the frame, but I wonder how that would change our geometry and if we'd get too much change route during suspension sag or whatever. So we're going to play with that later because we have a big plan for this bike uh, coming up next in just a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. So make sure to check out the links in the video description where you can find parts to the Wildcat 223 that's on the Trailmaster, as well as all the parts that we use in this Coleman bike. That's about as far as I would take this 196cc engine. You're going to be held back a lot by the head. And of course, you're getting more bore and stroke if you go up to, especially like a 223, but even a 212 you're better off with than this engine. But uh, it made good power. Again, I think it's max that you would want on this frame with that short swing arm. Unless you like wheelies, this thing is perfect for you. It is the most wheelie happy bike I think we've ever had. Uh, so, master shout out to EC Carbs. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting us. Uh, check out those links and stay tuned. We've got a lot of stuff coming. And uh, we're about to be doing some stroker kits on some engines. And just keep on taking these engines further and further. So, thank you guys. We love you. And God bless.